On this channel, we're all about honouring the players and the fans who make our football club the best in the world. And as we always say, supporting Manchester United is our religion. For players and fans alike. We love to shine a light on the great events celebrated by our big red family. And coming up next month in Edinburgh is a very special event indeed, being attended by some of our United legends. Joining me now to tell us all about it is Peter Wood, chairman of the Edinburgh branch of the Manchester United Supporters Club. Peter, you've done a remarkable amount of preparation for what is going to be a fabulous 20th anniversary of the Edinburgh branch. Tell me, Peter, what have you got in store for us? It's something that we've been planning for a long time. Um, it's certainly something that I've been conscious that it's been just around the corner for a few years. And I wanted to do something special. Um, Edinburgh is a, a wonderful city for people to visit. And we've organised a dinner in one of the hotels, a lovely hotel, the Grovner in Edinburgh, where um, I think it will give people a sample of what Edinburgh is all about and also will give us a great celebration of what the Supporters Club's been about, been about for the last 20 years. It sounds fantastic, Peter. I think what a lot of people want to know is, I know you've got some celebrities coming, some former players too. Tell us who you've got coming along to the dinner. We've got Martin Bucking coming. Martin, um, Martin's one of my heroes. There's Martin Bucking on the wall there. He's a legend. He's my, my first Manchester United hero. Um, we've got Brian McClare, another legend in Manchester United and, you know, a guy that I loved watching Brian McClare play football. Uh, I didn't miss too many of the games that he played for Manchester United. And when he moved to Edinburgh, he very kindly agreed to become a patron of our supporters club. Also got Norman Whiteside coming along, who... Norman's Norman Whiteside coming to Edinburgh to our dinner. Wonderful. Um, we've also got Jim McCallyog coming up. And uh, Jim McCallyog has been a great supporter of our supporters club. And uh, he kindly got involved in something we did a, a few years ago, um, a charity event. And I've never forgot that. It's a lovely man. Peter, I know you've got a lot more VIP guests planned, including the voice of Old Trafford himself, Alan Keegan will be your host for the evening. Our good friends John and Alex Neild will be among many familiar faces from Manchester. And you've got members of our big red family coming from many parts of the world. Tell me about some of those loyal supporters who'll be coming to Edinburgh for this great event. We have guys that I've known for a long time. And the, the, the guys from the ugly bus that are coming up from Hampshire, I think there's about 10 or 12 of these guys coming up who... And I originally met these guys over, in, it would have been around maybe 19, 20 years ago. Um, around about Rio Ferdinand. I think Rio Ferdinand's first game was in the Amsterdam tournament. So it would have been back around about then. Um, so they're coming up. My great friends from Malta. Um, I was over in Malta recently, um, just a few weeks ago. And there, there were... A, a huge number of other supporters from Manchester United had been rumoured to possibly play a friendly match in Malta. So a lot of people had um, arranged to go over. And I still went because to to go to Malta and um, I don't need to tell you, John, you know, to go to Malta and get the hospitality of the, the guys over there was just the most incredible thing. But the thing that struck me is how many of them have decided to come to our dinner. It's, um, that's um, taken me by surprise. It's incredible how many of these guys are coming. And other guys that, as I say, were over in Malta at the time, friends of ours from all over the UK, uh, from other places in Europe, um, got people coming from America, uh, Africa, and all over Europe. But really, you know, we've got Keith Norris coming over, bringing Big Lily from Northern Ireland. I've got other people coming from different parts of Ireland, people from Wales, um, and so many other guests from sort of the Manchester area, and obviously our uh, own supporters up here, members of the supporters club, and other people th from Aberdeen um, who, who are coming to the dinner, 
And not just that, you know, if it, it, there, have, there have been people who have decided that they couldn't come, but they've decided to um, help us with uh, sponsorship or um, promoting the, the event or, you know, in, in, in some way that um, has been really great. It's been, it's, it's been a, it's, it's been lovely to actually have the support of the Big Red family. Peter, I'm really looking forward to what you've got in store for us. Tell me about the venues you've got lined up because I know the love for Manchester United has won you some special favours from the, both the restaurant you're taking us to after the Friday boat trip and the Grosvenor Hotel where the main event on the Saturday night is going to be staged. So the restaurant that we're going to after the boat trip, uh, Pier Brasserie, it's owned by my very good friend Mark Petonia. He's been a great supporter of the Supporters Club um, I've taken Brian McClare down to a couple of his events. His opening night was wonderful. And um, he has had, um, he's quite, had quite a hard time recently with uh, with COVID and stuff. He opened just before the lockdown and um, he, he then had a, a flood in the restaurant. So he is doing great stuff with the restaurant. We are uh, using this Friday night to support him and he's going to look after us uh, what he's got in plan for us is going to be wonderful. And the actual hotel where we're having the, the dinner is the Grovener Hotel in Haymarket in Edinburgh. They've been wonderful with us, um, you know, doing things for us that, um, I mean, they're, they're allowing us to kit this place out exactly how I would want to kit it out with flags and stuff. The hotel staff have been great. They've given us a discount for guests who are staying over. And um, I'm hoping to squeeze a couple of wee bits more out of them by the time we're finished the event. So um, fair play to both of these huge supporters now of um, the Edinburgh Reds, the Pier Brasserie and the, the Grovener Hotel. One of the things that always strikes me about these events is the, uh, the amount of flags that turn up from such wide and distant places. And I'm sure it's going to be the same up in Edinburgh. The fact that Big Lily is uh, coming over you know, everything will be not centred around that, but it's hard to ignore such a, a huge flag. I think the flag itself is something like 40 foot by 30 foot. So we've got a couple of places in Edinburgh that we want to put this, this flag. And the Edinburgh Reds flags and other flags that people will be bringing to the, the actual dinner, we'll put as many of those up in the hotel as we can. Peter, I know during your time running the Edinburgh branch, you've already raised over £100,000 for various charities. It's a truly magnificent effort and it's also testament to the generosity of Manchester United fans who worship our club and our history. Tell me about the charities you're hoping to raise money for this time around and how can fans contribute? Um, John, I've, I've always tried to use our supporters club in a positive way and fundraising is something that I've always felt strongly about. Um, the the choices of, I mean, we, we thought about four or five, six, seven, eight different charities that we could help. And we narrowed it down to four. And the four charities that we'll be raising money for are the Dennis Law Legacy Trust. These are guys that you actually introduced me to at Old Trafford one day. Um, and we spent a wonderful day with these guys from Aberdeen and with uh, Dennis Law. And the work that these guys do in Aberdeen is incredible. Um, so yeah, the Dennis Law Legacy Trust, the East Nuke Wheelchair Appeal that's run by Eleanor Bowman. Incredible work that uh, this lady does. And um, so we've also got the Millennium Chapel in, uh, in Malta that's run by the ex Hibernians manager from when Manchester United played them in 1967, Father Hillary. And the, the, the other um, most wonderful uh, charity is the Association of Former Manchester United Players. Um, I love the work that they do, the former players that they help, um, the, the the money that they raise, I have wanted to do something for Alan Wardle and the Association of Former Manchester United Players for, for a long time. And I've, I've always felt that they would be certainly one of the, 
the the charities that we would be raising some funds for if ever we had a huge dinner and the great thing about all of these charities that we're going to be raising funds for i've got gordon over in malta just now trying to persuade father hillary to come and join us for the dinner um and if if we manage that uh, we will have members from all of these charities along at our dinner that's absolutely fantastic pete i'm really looking forward to it and i know a lot of people will be and what's great about these events is when we've got former players who become like fans themselves when they finish players and they they really give them their, their time very generously and they love spending time with fans at these great events because i think it's what makes united special the fans and the, and the players and uh, when we have these events and uh, you know, we all talk about how great our support is for, for our football club, but I do think that Manchester United fans are special. And guys like you that make these things happen, make it special. And you, I feel like we're part of a great big red family. And uh, I'm so looking forward to uh, what you've got planned for us. I just hope the weather's going to be good. <laughs> I think what we'd like to ask you, Pete, is uh, how can people support this? I mean, are there still tickets left? And I know you, you would welcome some more sponsors. How do people get behind you? The actual dinner itself has been sold out uh, for a few weeks, but this was based on uh, people putting in a, a note of interest for tickets. Uh, there are, I think, 236 spaces at the dinner, and we had that up to about 260 last week. But since then, some people have said, look, you know, it's my wife's birthday, it's my auntie's birthday it's my cat's wedding it's whatever whatever it is and, and and this is sort of narrowed down now to around about i think i think this morning we had about 10 spaces left and i've had a few inquiries today those by the time i get back to these people those, those spaces might be away um with regards to how people have been helping us we will have a we will have a program on the night where if friends of ours, businesses, um, anybody wants to put an advert in this uh, program, contact me. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing something there. We also have um, a couple of people who have actually donated some money to help us um, bring some of these people along to Edinburgh. Uh, we've got a lot of free tickets that we've given away we will be putting a lot of people up in hotels. So that's taken away some of the money that we could possibly raise. I wouldn't have it any other way though. Um, if we can give some free tickets away, if we can um, put some people up for the night or two or three nights in Edinburgh and pay their train fare and flights to Edinburgh, um, it's what we want to do. Um, we have been blown away recently by someone who's basically just given us uh, a thousand pound um, someone who I've never even met uh, we have had other people who have offered for their companies to possibly do some sponsorship we've had a couple of whiskey companies that want to speak to us we have thought about and we are probably going to contact a few of Manchester United's uh, sponsors and see if they would like to sponsor the event. Any money that goes into this event will go back to the charities that we are helping. Um, the one thing I would say is it's, it's going to be a five-way thing. So there's the four charities and there's also our supporters club. Um, we have, for the past couple of years been subsidizing trips to Old Trafford because of the lack of uh, supporters wanting to go to games and I think two only two of the last 20 trips that we've made to Old Trafford um, have either broke even or made a made a profit the rest of the games have been subsidized so we've been using a lot of branch funds and we have needed to do some some form of we've never done a fundraiser to help the supporters club really you know we've, we've always been helping um, charities over the years and we're hoping that once we get enough money into our coffers and we're probably about a couple of thousand pound down then 
the rest of the money that we raise with this dinner will go to the four charities that we mentioned earlier. We're all looking forward to the event. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I hope the weather's good. But uh, I'd just like to know a little bit more about the Edinburgh branch of the Manchester United Supporters Club because it's tremendous the work that you do and it's also tremendous what passionate support you've got up in Edinburgh. Tell us about how, how, how big the support is in Edinburgh and how, how many people do you get to come to, uh, to games? If I'm being honest, I think back to 20 years ago and beyond 20 years ago when, um, I mean, prior to starting this, branch of the supporters club there, there were always supporters clubs in edinburgh there were supporters buses came i mean it, at times during the, the late 70s early 80s there were three or four different buses that came down to old trafford and um but none of them were they were here one minute and gone the next and i wanted to maybe start something that could go on for a few years and get a wee bit of a, a legacy. And with us taking minibuses down for the first few years, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed it. It was the same guys that were almost going to every single game. And it was Manchester United themselves who wanted us to become an official supporters club that persuaded me to um, try and uh, increase the size of the supporters club and you need to try and raise the profile so getting flags made and getting involved with things i mean the last few years getting in the guys into hotel football on a match day doing things within manchester with the supporters club getting involved in different fundraisers that people had organized within the manchester area other manchester united supporters groups i think it'd been wonderful for the supporters club and the and the guys that we now take down to Old Trafford on a regular basis. We take a coach to every game. These guys, I couldn't be more proud of them. And um, you know, we we aim to continue going down for many years. And when I'm, you know, not the chairman, um, I hope I'll still have some form of role within the supporters club, and I can just either make a free fare for all the work that I've done over the years, or I'll pay. By the time I give up, it will probably be an OAP fair, so uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm proud of the guys. I have to say, Pete, I'm proud of you, and uh, it has to be underlined how much work, I know how much work you put in, Peter, and uh, the guys that help you. And uh, without guys like you, we wouldn't have supporters clubs all around the world, but we do, we have supporters clubs all around the world. And uh, I think it's time for a round of applause for Peter Wood. So, <laughs> Peter Wood, well done. I know you've highly thought of around the world and uh, it's really a testament to you personally, I think, that you've got so many people coming from different parts of the world. And I know that you've got a good contingent, especially coming from Malta, because you were over there recently. And I know how highly thought of you are over in Malta at the world's oldest Manchester United supporters club. So just before we sign off, I'd just like you to just remind us about what the event is for. It's the 20th anniversary and who's going to be coming? We want to give people who are coming a taste of what Scotland's about, try and give back a little bit of the hospitality that I've received all over, not just in Malta, although I would need to go some to beat the hospitality that, that we get when we go to Malta, but it almost seems that everywhere I go, I was over in Norway, a couple of years ago, an Eric Cantona weekender. And, you know, we, sp we spent the weekend with Jan Eric in, um, in, 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 in Norway and Eric Cantona. It was, it was the most wonderful time that we had there. And I seem to get this incredible hospitality everywhere I go. So we want to try and give some of these people that are coming or all of these people that are coming a little slice of uh, hospitality. But if we can get some sponsors on board, that would be great. Looking forward to seeing Martin Buck in. Looking forward to doing something with Chalky that I know he loves doing. Um, Denise and uh, Norman coming up, brilliant. Jim McCallyog and the guys from the Association of Former Manchester United Players. And I just hope that the, the charities that we are helping out, um, we, we, we make them uh, proud of, of what they're doing. Peter, it's always a pleasure chatting, my friend. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm really looking forward to coming up to Edinburgh in October for this fantastic event. 
and looking forward to meeting all those fabulous fans from all around the world and your VIP guests, those former Manchester United legends, Martin Buchan, Bran McClare, Norman Whiteside and Jim McCalliog. I know you've also got a few other surprise guests potentially lined up. We're keeping our fingers crossed, but I'd like to give you the final word. I want to give you the big build-up because you never know. There might be somebody out there watching, another potential sponsor who can get behind your event and help you raise even more money for those fabulous charities that you mentioned earlier. So take it away, Peter. It's down to you. Give it the big build-up. Well, the... The amount of people that are coming to Edinburgh, all that I'm going to say to you is we're going to try and give you the most wonderful weekend and uh, I can't wait to see you all. I'll see a few of you at the, the next few games. So, um, But the the group of people that are coming to Edinburgh um, and that collective sort of thing that you have at a gathering, at our, um, there'll be a bit of dancing as well. And, you know, we can have a wee, a wee sort of thing that um, it will be a wee bit special. Really looking forward to it. And thanks for everyone's support. And um, if anyone, as I say earlier on, if anyone wants to give us any more support, then please get in touch. Yeah!